Jennifer Curtin, Senior Editor at GenomeWeb, and I'll be your moderator today. The title of today's webinar is Thinking Beyond the Benchtop Instrument in CRISPR, COVID-19 Surveillance, and Cancer Research Workflows, and is sponsored by Automata. Our speaker today is Jerome Nicode, the head of the Advanced Sequencing Facility at the Francis Crick Institute. You may type in a question at any time during the webinar. You can do this through the Q&A panel, which appears on the right side of the webinar presentation. And if you look to the bottom tray of your window, there are a series of widgets to enhance your webinar experience. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jerome. Jerome? Hi, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, I'm gonna start here, yes. So my name is Jerome. I'm the head of the Advanced Sequencing Facility at the Creek. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here to talk about the work we've been doing in, with Automata in the last a bit more than a year uh, to implement the, the instrument in our laboratory. So I'm going to start with a few words about what we do, how we do, and then go on into um, talking about this project specifically. So the Francis Creek Institute is based in the center of London in the UK, and it's a unique partnership between three um, academic institutions, UCL, Imperial College, and King's, and also three um, uh, funding organization, Medical Research Council, Cancer Research UK, and the Wellcome. So um, we are 1,500 staff and students in the institute with a few other uh, visiting scientists for the, from the house institution, which make us the biggest um, biomedical research institute under one roof in Europe. Uh, there are a bit more than 100 research group, and there is no um, unique theme in, in the institute. Uh, basically, our work is to um, understand the biology of health and disease, and some people may be working in immunology, um, neurology, cancer, or even ancient DNA or microbiology. So what makes it very unique is there is no um, division or department in the, in, in the building, and it is actually built to um, promote uh, collaboration. So you see a lot of work that has been done uh, between research group um, in, in our institute. Uh, one also um, one of the characteristic of the Francis Creek is that technology is in our is, a, is our DNA. So there is a clear understanding that technology is driving discovery in in, in biomedical research, and we have eighteen technology um, uh, science technology platform, sequencing being one. But you can see here there are a whole range of technology from proteomics, metabolomics, flow cytometry, or uh, computer sciences and AI. Then all research can work with uh, to drive their, 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 their research. Um, um, so the sequencing facility um, at the Creek is made of 18 scientists, and we do what is generally done um, in, in this kind of, a, kind of institute, mostly um, genomics projects. Um, we're doing RNA-seq, exome-seq, and all of the project we do is a collaboration between the research group who comes to us and they want to have access to, um, to, to the technology, to the support, to the expertise. So in terms of the broad uh, genomic subject, we also obviously uh, um, have an advanced project in single cell or spatial technology. And also we provide some extraction services that's pretty popular in the, in the Institute. We have a whole range of instrument um, that allows to do our work, the Illumina nanopore sequencer, and also the geomex and cosmics um, spatial instrument or 10x chromium or cell in one for, for single cell um, biology. We roughly um, process 400 projects a year. And for that, uh, because of the throughput, we also heavily rely on, on automation. So these are the instruments we have in our, in our laboratory. Um, the workhorse is the Hamilton Star and, and, and NGS Star. We also have an Agile and Bravo that we use solely for a high throughput uh, single project. We also use the miniaturization potential of the mosquito, uh, the KIQHT uh, that we use for, for RNA extraction. The, the Biomech i7 is typically used for uh, a lot of things and, and small program. So we have a few um, workflows automated. I mean, library preparation, RNA extraction, base clean up, normalization. Um, pretty standard work that we're doing, um, also to prepare plate for QC, for instance. And I guess I don't have to convince this audience of the advantage of automation, so it increase the throughput, also improve the productivity, uh, reproducibility, and diminish the, the, the handling errors um, uh, in, the, in the processing of, uh, of samples. And also it's reduced the manual labor, and then, uh, so scientists in the, in, the, in, the, in the lab can do 
some other um, task that are, uh, they have to conduct. So we're using automation daily for our research, and it has been a pretty successful endeavor here in um, at the Creek. But then in 2020, everything changed. So we're hit by the pandemic and everything held. And then at the time, there was this urgency uh, to be able to fight the pandemic. And one clear issue that we had in London, and I think it's everywhere, is with the shortage of, um, of tests. So a few of the research scientists at the Creek are also clinician in the local hospitals, and there were enough tests for the patient, but not enough for the workforce, um, the, 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 the nurses and, and the doctors. So what we did at the time is rapidly test, uh, set up a testing pipeline, and that was a partnership between the Creek, the UCLH, which is a University College London Hospital, and Health Service Laboratory, which is a diagnostic lab, who provided the expertise of providing, uh, of making diagnosis so they can supervise, um, supervise the platform. And the aim was actually to test the, the healthcare workers. Um, first of all, it was um, to make sure that any um, um, uh, any nurses or doctor who might have been um, presenting symptoms will not be necessarily quarantined, but then if tested positive, go back to the, go back to take care of the patient. Also, to reduce the asymptomatic spread of um, of samples of of uh, SK worker that might be positive, but actually going to the hospital, and also to protect the workforce and the, in the care home. So, this has been possible, and we set up the test of our, the the pipeline over two weeks because of the scientists we had at the Creek. So we had first dozen of people who have been, uh, who, has, who are staff scientists, who uh, set up this platform, uh, set up this pipeline, and then we had hundreds of volunteers amongst our staff who, who, who run it. And all this was possible only because there was a sheer number of people present in the Institute um, with the necessary skill and motivation to make it happen. So, this is just a schematic of the of the, the testing pipeline that we set up. The first step was to receive the tube, and this is a manual process uh, done by the, the by the volunteers in the in, the, in our CL2 lab, and then also by inactivation, every single sample is being activated manually on the, on the, on the CL2 cabinet, and this is where at that stage you start to use automation. First of all, in this very um, uh, critical step of uh, moving the tube from um, moving the sample from the tube to the to the 96 volt plate because we, we we achieved that with um, with Hamilton starlet and then the star so to allow complete traceability of the samples um, uh, make sure the information was correct and then we automate the RNA extraction so it was done originally on the two biomech fx's um, but then also it has been extended to to the Hamilton and that provide the throughput and reproducibility of the result. And then um, once the RNA extracted, we're going for RT-PCR for, for testing. So we first starting the, the, the work between the Creek and uh, the UCLH. And then um, we expanded to other hospitals around London. And at the end, um, when we're working on full stream, we're working with nine different hospitals, 98 care homes and a mental health trust. So, the Creek Consum the, the pipeline has been running for two years, from April 2020 to uh, April 2022, and we did almost 700,000 tests. So this is um, this this graph here um, shows the um, the number of tests that we done. We ramped up up to two or three thousand sample a day, and at the end of the um, the, the the pandemic, when we we reopened, we actually kept the pipeline running at the Creek. And we uh, when we introduce um, a, a scheme to test uh, every every member of staff entering the building, we need to have a negative test in the last seven days, and that was our policy um, to 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 limit the um, the number of infection happening on the on the workspace. And with this strategy in place, we were able to um, to reopen our lab uh, quicker than other institution. And this is just to show the positive rate when we have, it was very high at the beginning and here during the second wave of the, um, with the, uh, the alpha variant. In, in terms of the, in, in addition to the, to the PCR tests, we have been uh, sequencing all our positive. So we have 1% positive rate for the duration of the project and 6,000 samples were, were sequenced and more than 4,000 share with, um, with, a, with, a, with a COG UK. And you can see here the semantics here we present when you can see also um, in amongst the staff that was tested in the, um, on the pipeline, we can see the same uh, alpha, uh, beta, and the Omicron waves on, on the right. So the work of the pipeline is finished, and we actually have published the results um, 
is, is the, the learning from this experience uh, very recently, uh, just to look at how we be able to protect um, the staff those, um, during 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 the pandemic. But the pandemic might be over. Um, we still carry on having a look at uh, at, at COVID, and during um, early on during the during the the, the pandemic. We studied the quick study, the legacy study, which enrolled uh, 800 um, staff from the creek and hospitals who were volunteers, and they've been providing uh, complete information about uh, the, the vaccination and also giving blood. This happened during the um, during the pandemic, but it's also still happening uh, right now. And the idea is to be able to use this information to test whether the vaccine that has been administered are protecting against the new variants. And all of that uh, requires still um, the culturing of, of, of viruses. We also test um, the, the, the positive patient in the, in the legacy and we sequence them. So we still have some COVID sequencing happening in our, in our facility. And the beauty is that is all this information is shared in real time and fits it uh, directly into the, um, the national um, uh, in the, into the government. So there is direct link with the, um, with the chief medical officer in the UK and some other um, advisory group who can pr provide um, the guidance to the government how to react to, to new variants. Uh, we get 16 papers published on, the, on, this, um, on this study with uh, more than 1,000 um, citation. So the thing is, what did we learn from the pandemic? So first of all is, um, this is exactly what happened with the legacy studies. Like, we're going to learn what happened, um, and then it is critical to keep um, surveillance of the of uh, of, of variants of, of uh, sorry of, of viruses, and and how to, to provide them uh, to um, uh, uh, to prepare for the for the next pandemic. And also, what I learned, and I, I mean, what we learned at the creek and me on a personal level, is that the automation is key to make it happen. If we manage to have our response last time for the during the pandemic, it's because we have a large amount of um, a large number of people that were available to do it. But then, if we were better prepared with better automation, then it would make the, the system much more efficient. So, it made us think about the automation today and uh, what we could do to move forward. So, if you think about automation, everything goes around is like in our case, big liquid handler where we can automate the library preparation, extraction, or also certain of these steps, and we use them heavily. heavily. But if you think about it, uh, there are quite a few other things that goes around the, the, each processes. We need a, a PCR to amplification, for the amplification, plate reader for, for, um, for quantification, or quality control, and, and centrifugation. And then what's happening is that you get someone, like a scientist, a technician, who need to move the samples from one instrument to another. It takes time, but it's also a source of error and source of variation. And just like to say, like, if you want to if move forward into um, having an impact with automation to the research, or actually to biomedical um, and the pandemic in general, is that we try to integrate everything together to make it more efficient. Um, and this is when we started to work with, um, with Automata. So we get in touch with them. I mean, we started to discuss um, in, uh, in, uh, in late 2021, and then um, the, the system was built in, in, in 22. And this is how it look uh, in our lab. So this is our lead platform. And um, the picture was taken last week. Um, and then what we have in this platform is four different instruments, um, liquid handler, then there is also a plate reader, a thermocycler and um, and uh, and a centrifuge. So with that, we can have a complete walkaway automation of very long uh, workflow. There is a manual step at the beginning to set up a protocol, but then that can be done without any intervention. What was really interesting using um, the Benchley platform is that we can use existing instrumentation. So the star and um, and the plate reader were instruments we already have in the lab, and we just repurpose to be open. To be, um, to be used on the platform. As you can see here, the footprint is rather small. So it's a six, link, uh, six bench in here. And then it's also future proof for, for evolution. So you will see, and I will explain later, that actually we're not using the entire space um, 
of the of the platform, but we could be able to add some more equipment. And also it's an open platform, which makes it really interesting because the instrument that are incorporated in the, the uh, on the on, on, on the rig are not solely used for the for the automata workflow. For instance, the star is commonly used for the mini prep um, uh, extraction. Uh, that plasmid extraction that we don't use as a as an automata workflow, but uh, as a as a standalone. So this is the um, the work we've done is automata. Um, they first installed the prototype in May 2022, and then it was already the plan at the time of the installation of the prototype is to receive an, an update with um, with the next gen, which become the the link platform in in June this year, uh, and we explain also. Uh, What's the difference between the two? And we also have a plan uh, later this year uh, to, to incorporate a new equipment to increase the capacity. So on the left, you can see on the slide is the prototype, uh, prototype work cell. And on the right, how it is. So you can see the changes. So the, the location um, is roughly the same in our lab. We also have the same um, four instruments that are integrated. And I will show you what are the differences between, um, between the two. So this is a schematic provided by Automata with the um, um, all the prototype on the left and then the the bench leak on the on the right. So uh, first of all, the the lab bench is uh, there are six lab benches in our in our system. The the size is the same from from the older one to the to the uh, to the new one to the to the to the link, but the height is slightly reduced. Uh, I think they they probably have learned from from the we. We learn together from the from the prototype. That actually can be an issue typically to access this instrument. Uh, then there is this lava sh shuttle system that you've probably seen before. Well, actually, it's some kind of a, it's it's a, it's a small boat that allow the transport from um, from plates from one side uh, to the other of the of the instrument. And this has been redesigned compared to the um, to the previous version, where it actually I think goes faster. Um, if I, I never wish it. And also the, the design is slightly um, uh, nicer. And then the big difference we can see immediately is that um, they changed the, the robot arm. They, uh, the, the older system, the prototype used the EVA arm that was um, uh, for design made by Automata. And they moved to the SCARA arm that is on the, on the rail system. So on the, on the prototype, you could have two or actually even three arms on each side. For the for the transport of, of plates, and here you get like the system um, uh, that goes uh, that can move left to left to right. Um, another thing here that is um, an upgrade in the in the new system is actually the use of the space here under the under the bench. So we get the shuttle system here. We got four out of the six. This is another schematic of the of our instrument, and here what we what they they created here is that if the shuttle is not Required on, on one part of the instrument, then you suddenly have some room for uh, additional equipment. So here, what we put in our system is a centrifuge thermocycler on on that side. On the other side, it hasn't been installed yet, but we plan to put um, a plate hotel. Um, there is also an upgrade in the digital platform. Um, the, in the in the in the prototype, it was all done in Python, and now they are a graphic user interface. I must admit that I haven't used it myself, so I can't really comment on that. But it makes them. Uh, it, it, it helps the, to, to visualize the, the the progress of the of the workflows. So, um, it has been a true collaboration between the Tomata and our lab to to make this transition to the link. So this is um, on the left. You get the first um, the, the first prototype, and you can see here Vlad um, uh, Vlad and uh, and Emma from the um, uh, from Automata working uh, with Dan. And with Ashley, who are uh, automation specialists in our in our lab, and when I look at the link now, um, I see that uh, we, our lab, and I think working together, um, uh, our input has actually uh, helped to to design the, the platform as it is now. For them, I think for Automata, it was the uh, the chance to to deploy their, their platform in a, in, a, in a real lab to get our input and to see how they can they can produce this um, this link bench as we know them so um, this is our link benches and I'm going to spend a bit of time to uh, 
explain the, the different workflow that we've uh, um, implemented. Uh, so we got three so far, and we hope to do more um, in, in the future. The first is uh, for MPCON sequencing, um, then the extraction of RNA from FFD samples, and then finally uh, uh, automation of, uh, of COVID sequencing. So MPCON sequencing is typically used for um, um, for the validation of CRISPR-induced mutation, and the protocol is uh, adapted from the 16S uh, uh, um, protocol from from uh, Illumina. So what is happening is the researchers they're going to amplify the region of interest um, with uh, Nexera tag um, uh, oligos, then produce a bit clean the the the, the amplicons that they submit to the to the to the facility, and what we do uh, in the facility is to prepare them index PCR, then uh, clean up, normalization, and then prepare for uh, for sequencing. So uh, the sequencing is done on the MySeq Nano, and this is a pro um, this is a service we offer uh, as a as a drop off service and then um, very uh, rapid turnaround time is required. Typically, uh, people who drop their samples uh, and they want to have the results the same week or the week after. This is in high demand um, uh, service in our facility. And in the last 12 months, we sequenced more than 4,000 samples. And we can have between one and two runs per week is completely unpredictable. So it's really important to be uh, highly reactive. And um, we used to do that manually or semi-automatically. Uh, and now it's completely done on the on the link platform. So this is the schematic of the um, of the workflow that I go through uh, that we've done in um, uh, on on our link. So um, the samples they, they they come as an amplicon DNA are submitted to the plate, and then the first step is the preparation of the PCR uh, on the Hamilton Star. The plate is centrifuge and then move to the uh, to the thermocycler for index PCR. And then after index PCR, it goes back to the to the to the Hamilton uh, star uh, for for cleanup and the and the preparation here of the of the plate for quantification. So this plate is centrifuge and then goes to the plate reader for fluorescence quantification. And this is really neat. Here is what's happening is that the system can get the information from the plate reader to immediately feed back to the Hamilton and provide the metrics for the pooling. So there is absolutely no intervention from the plate to the pool, and then the pooling is done based on the on the, on the measure provided by the by the by the plate reader. So what is happening is before we used to it used to take four hours, and now we got the LinkedIn platform, which only takes thirty minutes to set up, and it's completely book away. And this is really really um, um, useful for a laboratory because if someone submits some samples and they would like to even process. In the past, what we used to do is someone, one of the team had to spend half a day to prepare the samples rapidly. As here, the only thing that needs to be done is someone to find 30 minutes at the beginning of the day to set up the platform, the samples and the pool is prepared, and then it's ready to uh, to go on the on the on the MySeq. The turnaround time is really increased with this um, with this uh, with this protocol. Um, then the, certain, the second workflow we've automated on the link is the extraction of uh, FFP sample, RNA extraction of samples from, um, from uh, FFP tissue. So the formally fixed um, uh, FFP samples are widely used uh, in, in, uh, in, that, in pathology labs to, uh, for the long-term storage of, um, uh, of tissue. Um, and then they create a very large archive of samples where you can have the tissue and the patient data that becomes available for the researchers. And we have quite a few of the research project or the research um, studies in our institute where you go back to this vast resource of samples and then they're gonna, um, uh, they're gonna need to analyze, for instance, for, for, for gene expression. So all the project we receive with this kind of samples are usually coming in large batches uh, to, be, uh, to be processed. One of the thing as well uh, that makes um, challenging uh, is that the automation of uh, uh, FFP, the, uh, the, the extraction from FFP samples, is quite challenging to, to automate. So we, we looked around different options, and uh, we found the former pure from uh, for Beckman culture that works really, really nicely. nicely. So um, this work was done by Daniel Leons, who is our senior automation specialist at the, 
in the team, and it managed to automate the entire workflow. Because um, um, the, the first step was um, the paraffinization uh, can sometimes be tricky when the, the transfer needs to be happening from the from the accused phase to the to the new um, uh, to, to, to the new tube. So what's happening? Um, sorry. Oh. So what's happening on the link is as follow. Um, we we take the three or four scroll per well uh, in a deep well plate that goes on the Hamilton star where we can have depreferization and then followed by certification and then the protein is case digestion and then it feeds to this um, this basically which is digestion which is an elution. So a lot of um, FFP extraction when they call it automated. Um, is very often this bit of the of the process that is automated, but the early steps are not. And I think here um, we achieve really uh, great success, especially for I mean, uh, six, uh, Dan to automate the, the entire um, uh, the entire process. And what we do here in the in the in the in the workflow is that the last step is a quantification. So at the end, the extracted RNA um, is is um, is quantified. The thing is, this is a, a rather long workflow, um, and uh, which take up to uh, up to four hours. But we managed to um, to simplify for five, five manual step going from one to another to only one. And I think the key here is that the entire workflow is replaced by uh, by automation. And so, when the project when the, the extraction is finished, it's also possible to take the RNA to store it at four degree thermocycle. So then it opens the possibility to actually use that uh, during the evening, for instance, and the, the, the samples can be stored overnight. So so far in the institute, we uh, extracted a bit more than 200 sample, uh, samples, with it, and it works perfectly. But that was only done on the prototype flow cell. So since uh, since we installed um, the LinkedIn platform, we don't have any. Um, we haven't done anything. But the program is ready to go. Um, so finally, the last um, workflow we worked on is on on COVID sequencing. So uh, as I mentioned earlier in this presentation, we sequenced more than four thousand uh, samples during the pandemic, and credit to him, most of the work. Um, most of the, the the automation was done by uh, most of the extract the the, the sequencing was done by um, by Ashley. Some of them manually and some of them uh, semi automatically. And the thing is, we currently don't need that many samples. But it was really important to have a workflow that we can use for um, for for rapid results. So what we've done during the pandemic is to implement the Corona hit. Um, this is a method that was um, developed by uh, Justin O'Grady uh, when he was at Norwich at the time, uh, which is based on the on the on the Arctic workflow. So um, you have um, um, from the RNA samples the, from the, the virus RNA uh, after following RT PCR, uh, following um, yeah, following uh, RT cDNA synthesis, uh, each sample is split in is split in two here. And then you're going to have 98 uh, pairs of primers that are split in two pools for the amplification of the of the of the virus, and then the the preparation um, the the libraries are prepared with a segmentation based library library prep like we use Nextera. Uh, just to say, this protocol is platform agnostic, can be used for Illumina and uh, and ONT, although we only use um, uh, Illumina. So, typically, what you would do because you have to prepare um, like uh, two PCR per samples, we will be processing during the pandemic 96 samples at the time, or 95 for the control. But what we've done here is actually um, to, to set design a workflow just for 47 samples. So um, when we split the two and then we pull them again, it's happening only in one plate. So that was critical to um, uh, to be able to get the workflow working uh, only with one thermocycler. But in essence, you can actually uh, imagine that by increasing the number of thermocycler or changing the protocol, you can also increase the um, increase the throughput. So this is the entire um, uh, sync, uh, sequencing uh, workflow, and it's got uh, thirteen um, uh, distinct um, uh, steps. So what's happening is first we're gonna have from the from the RNA samples, we're gonna artist uh, artist setup, and then reverse transcriptase after happened on, on the thermocycler. And then RT-PCR is set up on the on the Hamilton, and then it goes on the on the PCR. Uh, 
if you look at them, the workflow as it is here, it's happening without any manual intervention. And what's happening during the pandemic is that we, we have the first four steps together on the Hamilton. Then uh, someone will basically take the sample, like Ashley will take the plate, um, go to certification, and then uh, to go in the sprite cleanup, and then going in the end for the, for the future step, which is the, the library preparation. Here, everything ha happened without any, um, any intervention of anyone from start to finish. And again, we have these two normalization steps that happen after PCR and after library preparation. And again, this is a system where all the concentrations are measured automatically um, uh, uh, transmitted to the Hamilton for the, for the next step. Um, we start for 47, um, from 47 samples, and then we end up with uh, one pool ready for sequencing. So um, this has been quite an under, <laughs> uh, quite a feast. Like um, Ash, well done, Ashley, to to do that together with the team at the, at Automata. So we move from thirty step to one manual step. It is an extremely long protocol, which is now not hours long. And what was done before in two days could eventually uh, become an overnight run. So we haven't achieved that just yet, but um, uh, we're working on it. So um, what has been the the impact on the LinkedIn platform or on our work. So uh, we automated three workflows so far, as described, MP sequencing, RNA extraction, and then uh, COVID sequencing. I think the major impact for us has been the decreased turnaround time for the routine services, freeing time for the scientists to do other, uh, attend to other, other tasks. And also, we're building on now is to basically increase the use of equipment capacity um, uh, to run over um, overnight, for instance, we haven't really uh, started that just yet, but it's the plan for the for the next few weeks. So, uh, what's next for um, for for us and uh, and the link platform? So, we would like to uh, add some more uh, equipment. So, this is a representation of the, the our link platform as it is now, with the Hamilton, the plate reader, and centrifuge, and the thermocycler. And what we're going to we're planning to add now is a plate sealer and the sealer, and as well as a, as a QPCR. And the idea of uh, having this instrument is to increase the throughput with uh, allow multiple plate workflow, and also we can integrate the QPCR as um, as a QC step for library preparation, pre preferred prior to sequencing. But also we can make some from some uh, different uh, so design some assay, for instance, uh, from researchers in the institute that have a, a large QPCR uh, assay to do. There is also a second phase we're planning to um, uh, to integrate the the SPT lab tech dragonfly uh, that you might know. Um, the key advantage being the miniaturization of some of the assay to save costs on, on on reagent and also to reduce the tips usage. And also uh, it should allow us to um, to um, to, to design so more complicated, um, more complex, uh, more complex assays. So um, this is it for my presentation. So what I think is uh, the future of automation at the creek is that I think the automation's already made an impact um, on, 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 on genomics, and I think it's going to continue uh, to be the same. And I think we need to embrace new technology, new development. Uh, then basically to increase the amount of data that we generate, uh, to improve the quality of the data um, that, uh, that we generate, and then eventually to accelerate uh, discovery. Mm -hmm. And I think only platform is actually uh, a good solution for us uh, for that, because it's completely open. That means we can add any other equipment uh, that is suitable for our needs. It is flexible, so once we've got it, we have been able to um, design um, to implement different workflows, and we can we can do a new one. And it's also scalable. That this is also what we we planning here is that the benches are here, and then we can add more instrument in um, in in the future. So uh, uh, so that's it for me for today. I would like to finish by acknowledge the people who have been working uh, with me on this. Uh, on, on, on this project. So the, the staff in the advanced sequencing facility, specifically Daniel and Ashley, who are the, our automation specialists. Vicky and Olga were the first users on the, on the link platform. And also at Automata, um, the key people for, for the implementation is Vlad and Emma. We also work with Rob and Henry. And thank you for Pete and Mustafa to make it happen. So I pass it now to Kira. Thank you, Jerome. 
As a reminder to our webinar participants, if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A box in the control panel. And we'd also like to ask attendees to take a moment after the webinar is ended to take our exit survey and to provide us with your feedback. And so now I'll start the Q&A portion of the webinar. And for this, we'll also be joined by Alice Tomei Fernandez, a senior application scientist, multi-omics at Automata, and Russell Green, the director of product applications at Automata. And so our, our first question is, uh, looking forward, do you think you'll be able to automate all the work that you do in your lab? I think that's um, for you, Jerome. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. So I don't think so, uh, because um, I think the, the key here is to identify which are the workflows, which are the processes where the automation can be can be a benefit, because obviously the, the platform is flexible, but we use flex flexibility on, on the assay. So you're going to have to define what you need to do. And a lot of work that we do is still um, uh, very minute um, processing of, of samples or where we have to interact with, uh, with, with limited uh, input, for instance. And automation is not possible at that time. Okay. And, and what, what do you think has been the most significant benefit that you've gotten from installing the Link platform in your lab? Um, for us, it has been the walk away time. Um, because uh, there is a lot of um, repetitive tasks to be done for, for the workflow that I presented. And um, once the person has been set up, like the scientists have been set up the workflow, they can just attend to anything. For instance, the RNA extraction, we have this long step of two hours in the, bit, in, 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 in the middle, but someone needs to be attending the workflow before and just after. And here, this is completely uh, free, and then we can actually double the amount of, of work that we do in the lab. Um, Takan DreamHub NGS also offers a walkaway solution with integrated plate reader and thermocycler. Um, what, what, any advantage of using this automata equipment for amplicon sequencing over a different approach? Um, no, I mean, we, we've looked at different platform that would become available. Um, and then it was really uh, discussing with different, with different uh, companies and then finding the right uh, relationship with automata that made a choose to, to work with them but for sure other 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 um, solution exists for sure okay. um and, and another question that it came in is um how i think how far do you think it is from lab automation to lab intelligence huh. <laughs> um i think lab automation um as i say uh we can increase the number, the, the amount of data we generate. And I think all the artificial, artificial intelligence um, system or method that exists need to feed on data. And I think this is probably the next step. That's a nice question. I think it's probably the next step into, um, in, into the, uh, in the process, yeah. Uh, what would be the deciding or limiting factors for automating uh, a process? such as like frequency of use or the, the number, number of samples, what kind of goes into, into that thought process? Um, I think it's a bit like how long is a piece of string. So there is not a strict answer. It really depends of, uh, of uh, what you need to do and how you can do it, because obviously there are some limitations depending on, on the processes. But uh, I think for me, I've got the philosophy that if you do something three times, then it's open for automation. Uh, obviously, it's not always possible, but I try to uh, to automate, automate as as much as I can. Okay. Uh, do you think it's possible to automate like all the steps for for next generation sequencing, from sample preparation to bioinformatic analysis, and this particularly for oncology? The, the question is asking. Um, I think it's already happening. Okay. So we've seen these. Um, I mean. Uh, we have we've automated the RNA extraction library preparation. We don't have a full automata uh, for library preparation, but we're not really far. And then also for the analysis of data, we can have um, there are already an automated workflow that exists. For instance, the NF Core community are producing very nice workflow. They are fully automated. Um, about how long did it take to to set up these workflows? Uh, you know, from like I guess planning to implementation? So um, as you see in, in my presentation, we first worked with Automata on, on the prototype 
with the plan to move to the to the to link benches. So everything has been a bit longer with, with our setup, but I, I don't think we're going to need months to implement the, the next workflows because once the, the system are integrated on the platform, then it's some kind of a different modules moving samples one to another. And it shouldn't be more complicated than to do it on a, on a, on a singular liquid ender like, a, like a Hamilton in our case. Okay. And did you see any um improvement in data quality when you switched from the manual to automated protocols? So we've seen with the with the Amplicon sequencing, because this is where we've seen the uh, uh, where we've done where we, we've done the plus the the, the, the most and um, where we see less variation variability in the in the output, yes. I don't have yeah, I don't have data just I mean I haven't firm data just yet, but this is something that we've noticed yes in the last few weeks. Uh, um, in your in your third workflow that, that you described, um, would it be compatible with other COVID primer sets, um, Midnight, uh, Veriskip, or any others? So yes, short answer is yes. It shouldn't be too complicated um, to make to evolve the the workflow uh, because they are only like in this case they are only small step in the in the Hamilton protocol. To prepare the to prepare the the PCR, but also some other method could be used as well. Yeah, no problem. Uh, and, and can the the automation machines be disassembled when the application is no longer no longer frequent? Like if you're no longer sequencing for, for COVID in the future, um, you know, how easy would it be to disassemble? Well, I think we would not disassemble, and I think this is the idea of this this workflow being completely open. Mm -hmm. Is that it's there for one one workflow in this case COVID sequencing, but then you can repurpose to any other workflow. And I think we've seen this flexibility, and I think I, I wanted to demonstrate here when we do extraction, library preparation on, on the same workflow on the same platform. If our interests change in the future, then we'll be able to do it. We have some other ideas with some compound uh, screening that we want to do with the collaboration um, within the institute, and we hope to do that in the, um, on on the platform once we install the Dragonfly. Okay. And I guess one, one other question is, is, can you just maybe describe a little bit more about what your, your future plans are? I know you went to it a, a little bit, but uh, what, are you, what are you doing next? So we are um, uh, adding some more instrument to the platform, specifically to increase the throughput. So we have a few um, large, um, project in the institute where uh, the researchers are using qPCR in large scale um, and then what they do is to set up their own um, their own reaction every day using two machines and then that's using a lot of, uh, of the researchers time so what we're doing now is like hopefully once we have the qPCR machine and the sealer the sealer is we're able to build a workflow that can be run uh, without any uh, like for a number of plates without having any um, any intervention I mean the goal would be to be able to use that overnight, so the platform becomes a, stays available for the for the day to day use, and then uh, this this long project can be done. But I think our aim is basically to uh, use that machine to increase the throughput. And that looks like all the the questions that we've had come in. Um, so I'd like to to thank our speaker today, Jerome Nicole. Uh, Alice Tomei Fernandez and Russell Green and our sponsor Automata. Uh, as a reminder, please look for our survey after you log out to provide us with your feedback. And if you missed any part of this webinar or you want to listen to it again, an archived version will be emailed to all attendees. And thank you for joining us for this Genome webinar.